It would be an understatement to say that my meat has endured quite a bit of abuse. I've spent many days and nights walloping my wiener in search of a greater purpose. I was only 13 when I first started wanking to milkers on my screen. I was just a boy playing with my hog instead of playing with toys. I would yank and yank till it was sore and throw the tissue on the floor. But one time, I forgot to lock the door. It swung open, and I saw my mother's eyes fill with despair, just as my nut shot into the air. I remember earlier this year, when I would crank it three times a day, and with each successive nut, another part of my soul would be chipped away. After all, the more you nut, the more it takes to nut. When I first got on the hub, the videos on the home page would suffice, but the more sperm I laid to waste, the more I developed an acquired taste. Five girls, one guy, POV. Japanese woman lactates. These are the things I had to view in order to get my peener to finally spew. My nut used to shoot high onto my neck and chest, but because of overuse, now it leaks out like candle wax and turns my belly button into a kiddie pool. Oh, busting a nut, what a funny thing it is. Before the nut is busted, there's nothing that could be better. How it clears your mind, how it sings and dances. But once the nut is over, it all fades away, just as the autumn leaves drift from their branches. As you close down the tab, you may know you have committed a sin, but wait soon enough and you will do it all again. I grew up at a time where the moment I started feeling a little horned up, the moment I started developing, I had at my fingertips access to a nearly endless digital cornucopia of people beating cheeks. And I utilized this access alright. I would tug away at my underdeveloped wang any chance I got. Is there anything wrong with that? It's normal. It's just a classic spank. It's just a good old yank. I'm just rubbing one out. Is that such a crime? Some people say you're draining all of your life force energy and some people act like there's no evidence of, of any of that. You keep on cranking, it releases good endorphins. Well, in this video, I'm going to compile and condense a lot of evidence gathered by people smarter than myself and try to clear the air. If you go on a platform like Reddit, you will find communities like NoFap that describe many alleged benefits of not whacking off, including increased testosterone, more confidence, and a clear head, more motivation. If you look at the studies that back up these claims, the evidence is shaky at best. Because all of these grand claims are not built on any foundation and they can be easily swatted away, it's like the whole thing can just be dismissed as a bunch of hoopla. But hold on, people on Reddit aren't supposed to be taken seriously anyway. Don't throw the baby out with the bath because there is significant evidence to prove that ography is not a good thing for your brain at all. And there are some sources that attempt to refute this, but they are charlatans and I'll get into that later. Let's start with something that's not very controversial. Countless studies suggest that ography addiction is a very real thing. It's not that crazy. We know this from fMRI scans, which reveal ography use can be a pathological behavioral disorder similar to uncontrolled gambling. And it shows the same addictive principles of substance addictions like opioids and cocaine. There are three brain changes related to these addictions, sensitization, desensitization, and hyperfrontality. These addictions also follow three stages, binge, withdrawal, and preoccupation. If you take a look at these scans, in craving states of drug or alcohol related addictions, the amygdala, dorsal anterior, uh, fucking. If you look at the scans, the amygdala, dorsal anterior cingulate cortex, and ventral stradium activate. An fMRI on 64 men confirmed not only that ography use lights up these same parts of the brain, which has been confirmed many times, but also the more ography consumed correlated with less gray matter in the reward circuit over time. This happens because the cum goes up into your brain and it me uh, messes it all up. So given this evidence, what you could say is, okay, it's bad if you have an addiction, but it's cool in moderation. Here's the thing. Number one, chances are you have an addiction. 
And if you have an addiction, moderation does not work because you need to reset your brain and not feed the compulsive behavior at all. And in general, moderation does not work great with Ography because it is inherently extremely addictive. Ography releases a very large amount of dopamine in your brain. This is unquestionable, and it's not like if you do it, you're shooting off all this dopamine out of your balls and you won't be able to be happy anymore, but all nefarious addictions revolve around this limbic system chemical release, and the detrimental effects they have on mental health are very real and very substantial. It's important to point out that the chemical release to effort required ratio of ography is the most polarized out of any addiction meaning it's very easy to access, but it has a very high pleasure response. Low effort, high dopamine. A cocaina addiction has a higher chemical response than ography, but it's illegal, it's harder to access, you often have to pay for it, so it, the barrier to entry is a lot higher. A cigarette addiction has a lower release than a nut and a higher effort required. You still have to go out to buy them and they are widely accepted to be unhealthy. Ography is legal, widely accepted to be perfectly healthy and normal, and available to you at all times. We know that porking is addictive because porking is a primary primordial evolutionary survival instinct that is chemically rewarding to incentivize reproduction. Sex addiction is a very real thing, where now we're not monkeys anymore and we have these intelligent brains and we break the system and we pork so much that our nuts fall off. It becomes a disorder, an addiction. Ography has the same addictive qualities of this addiction, why would it not? In fact, it's pretty much the same thing except worse in every category. When you're watching Milkies on a screen, the dopamine actually hits faster and harder than if you were to see them in real life because your brain processes the pixels faster. Also factor in that Ography has endless novelty and genres and fetishes that you would probably not come across in the real world, and you have a real hoot and a holler on your hands. Watching Ography is like taking shots through your asshole. You get drunk faster with less alcohol, but it's more dangerous. So I've established that ography is an addiction and also is inherently addictive but what are the particular downsides of this addiction because sometimes you can have addictions that aren't that bad it's just a compulsive behavior it could be seen as a habit firstly less gray matter in the dorsal stradium which I went over earlier this can practically mean less motivation addicts showed less brain activity in response to normal stimuli so it's also a failure to enjoy the smaller things in life in some cases, it can cause erectile dysfunction. There are changes in your stress response. Could be a factor in anxiety if you have that, specifically social anxiety. Also, escalation due to desensitization. Uh, and this one can get really out of hand. Finally, ography addiction starts in your early teens. So all of these changes are more intense and more deeply ingrained. This cannot be controlled for in experiments because you can't strap a scanner up to a 13 year old looking at an endless amount of titties, that's illegal. If you could scan a preteen's brain the first time seeing this stuff, it would be wild. There would be no questions about any of this. Anyways, there are plenty of studies and sources that say Yank films are harmless. And that would be fun, I guess, but it, unfortunately it's just not true. To start off, I can eliminate many articles you may find because many of them cite Nicole Prouse, a psychologist and advocate for Cox Cinematography. First of all, she's blonde, so there goes half of her credibility. Also, her scientific experiments are doo-doo ass. Her study claiming to disprove the addictive qualities of recordings of people boning found that frequent ography viewers had lower brain activation when exposed to brief pictures of erotic content. This sounds pretty convincing, but the thing is, all this shows is desensitization, so she actually proved herself wrong. She made a little bit of a fucky-wucky in her calculations. In her other study from 2013, she didn't even have a control group, and she misrepresented the results. There's also this other thing about how nutting decreases your risk of prostate cancer, but there are conflicting findings among different studies when it comes to this, and scientists don't know why this would be the case. Stop using this as an excuse, especially for ography. Do you know what causes prostate cancer? Your overall health and your predisposition to prostate cancer. Stop playing around. All right, I want to leave with the one tip that will really help you on a brain reboot nofap journey, and this works for both men and women. I won't tell you to cut off your wiener, but maybe puncture it with a sharp object so you won't be able to get horned up without feeling physical pain. Pierce your schlong with a knife. That's what I'm advising you to do. I'm prepared to face the legal consequences. It's the only real way to get sure fire. 
so long.